So that's 23 here, and today we have the Sabivi Spiny Dogfish. Yeah, you heard right, Spiny Dogfish, which is a type of small shark that uh, he injects his attackers with poison from his spines. So he has two spines. Maybe that's why they got the two grinds. I don't know, but this is a Michael Gavco design, Michael Gavick design uh, from Gavco Knives. And the only two knives that I have of his is the, the new... We High Fin, which is also named after a shark, and the Drop.com Nurse, which of course is also named after a shark. He loves sharks, and um, he's he's always he's always got some very interesting takes on designs. And I, I've been following him from the very beginning, and I love his work. This knife comes in at fifty eight dollars, so it's a nice budget. Uh, area for a lot of people. Let's get the specs out of the way. You have a total length of 7.8 inches. So it's a more medium to smaller knife. Blade length of 3.47 inches and a grip area 3.65 inches. You have a scale thickness coming in at 0.51, so a little above average, and a blade stock thickness of 0.118. And the behind the edge thickness on the back portion of this grind is around 18 thousandths and the front near the tip is around 21 thousandths behind the edge. As soon as I saw this, I thought it was super unique look looking, not something you normally see in the budget arena, especially with all the uh, facets on the scales, the dual grind, something you usually see in higher end knives. And um, it, it, it's, uh, it's different. I like different. We have too many knives that look exactly the same. And I, whenever I first saw it, I, I thought it looked similar to something else and I could not remember. Uh, but I did find it. It was this guy, this slip joint, limited edition slip joint from Civivi, except they got tons of them. So I don't know how limited it was, but it has that same kind of silhouette a little bit. It's definitely, you know, a different knife completely, but I think the long hole and kind of the way the handle goes, except you don't have the swoops. So this is kind of what it, <laughs> what I was thinking of. And kind of a, a marriage between this and the Tanto version of that slip joint. But let's take a look at this one. Uh, my particular version is the black stone washed blade of 14C 28N blade steel, which is my one of my favorite budget steels. It has excellent corrosion resistance. It's tough. It's super easy to sharpen and get a super, super wicked edge on it. And it holds a respectable edge at that. Um... They're calling this a reverse tanto. You call it whatever you want. You call it a modified uh, sheep's foot if you want. Drop point. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, there's no jumping up top, but I had no need for it really. I didn't find I was slipping off or anything. Got a nice flat spot to put your finger. And because they they have this clip up here at the front, and you have the dual grind, which means this primary grind right here is higher and it's going to be a little bit thinner. You have a minor transition right here, another flat grind up here in the front, and this one is a shorter grind. It's going to be a little bit thicker behind the edge. Um, <laughs> we just said that in the uh, in the specs. It's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. A lot of times you see, whenever you see these grinds, you'll see the flat grind up here in the front for that thicker, robust grind, and then this will be a deep hollow grind. But as far as I can tell, they're both flat grinds. Now, because you have this thicker portion up here and this clip, you're going to have a much beefier tip, as you can see right there. So uh, you could do more, you know, tip work, boring into something. Maybe some very, very light prying. I wouldn't really recommend it with this one, but um, definitely have a more sturdy tip. And it's going to be good for piercing and stuff like that. Not going to be excellent for, you know, material that may collapse back on there because it's going to kind of cause drag with it. You do have a full forward finger troll right here, or depending on the size of your fingers, it could be just a bigger, uh, large sharpening troll. I can put my finger on here, kind of doing like a, a trigger grip right here um, and without a problem, but I am definitely right up on that edge. So for the most part, I cut stuff uh, uh, back here just to be safe. Do have a long opening hole right here. We'll talk about that later. And I think it's uh, about time to see how well this grind performs. As I got started, I noticed that the knife came with a decent edge. It 
it felt a little slick, um, maybe over polished. We'll have to see later on. But it's slicing okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the dual grinds unless uh, it's on like a fixed blade or something and done really, really well with like maybe a hollow grind and then a flat in the front. But with a smaller folder, it doesn't make as much sense because I'm not going to be doing, you know, super heavy duty stuff. Now, we're testing the ergos in this piece of birch right here, and right away, I noticed that very narrow, slim handle scales was very hard to get a solid grip on. It kept wanting to spin in my hands in the hammer grip, and um, when I when I went to a saber grip, I can get a lot more control, and it was easier to hold on to, but it was still a little bit difficult. I mean, not. Probably the knife you could be grabbing, but it does the job and I um, thought it did pretty darn good. Now we move to the half inch thistle rope and right at the first cut, I could tell that it definitely lacked any toothiness to that edge or any kind of aggression because it was skating off for the most part. Um, you can see I'm trying to use the portion of the grind where it's a little bit thinner, kind of in that transition point. I uh, found it was a little bit sharper back there, um, but I'm definitely able to get the job done. We get through 30 cuts before we run out of uh, the rope. Not bad, uh, but Civivis always do way better after the first sharpening. So uh, if you're not satisfied at first, give it a good sharpening, and I promise you'll be surprised by how well it does after that. Right away, I could feel that extra thickness in that tip, I'm trying to get through this leather because it leather kind of collapses back on itself, and it was a little bit difficult. That's that's another reason why you know I don't really like that thicker you know edge up there in the front because this is a small knife. You're, you're not going to be doing hard use tasks with this, and if you are, it's probably not going to work for you. Uh, but it slices fairly well, especially in hand cutting. Um, you know, for things like that, you know, some of these materials, all you need is that sharp apex because that's mainly what's going through it. But when we get to this right here, you can see that the grass, it didn't have as much aggression because it, it takes a lot more force to get through this tubing. This is a much more dense tubing than the first one. Also, it struggled on this a little bit. Um, it's, this is just compressed uh, corner cardboard. And, and like I said, it gets through all of it. I just think it would have been a lot easier if you would have had that same grind throughout. Uh, not the biggest difference between the two grinds, but definitely a noticeable difference, especially after you sharpen it a few times, you'll you'll see the difference. Uh, but it has enough aggression to get through the, the uh, eight ounce denim just fine. All right, let's test this edge out. It feels okay. Yeah, it's got some hangups in the front, but after the first sharpening, the edge of kitchen climbs dramatically with some UV knives. All right, let's close it up and take a look at the action. This thing has a beautiful, beautiful action. Nice drop shut action. Being that you have this long hole, they can dial the detent however they want. It's perfect for the reverse flick, and if you like to slow roll it, you can do that as well. Grab it kind of higher because it's, it's larger on this side, or if you want to do the drop, you can. You know, there, there's a lot of, let's see, can you thumb flick it? Hold on. Ah, and thumb flick it. It's not the easiest. Now, this is tip for right hand carry only. Sorry about that, lefties, because uh, you could easily access that hole as well. Gets that snappy action because it's riding on ceramic ball bearings and a ceramic detent ball. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a fidgety action. I find myself just opening and closing, opening and closing. All right, let's close it up and take a look at these very interesting looking scales. You have G10 scales with somewhat of like a rock texture. It's just a random pattern on there. I found it does offer some grip. Now, one thing I will say is uh, during the testing, uh, whenever I was doing the wood carving, the way it tapers down right here so thin, um, it, was, it was definitely difficult whenever I was really pushing into it to keep this knife from wanting to like spin in the hand. Um, so definitely going to cramp up the hands quicker and, uh, with a lot, a lot of pressure, I was feeling this ramp a little bit on the clip and the top part of this clip and inside of there. 
uh, but that was just, you know, heavy, heavy pushing. You know, not really the roll of this knife. That's why I was saying in the testing, I don't really get the dual grind on such a smaller, more dainty knife. Uh, not something I'd be doing heavier duty cutting with. But, you know, could you do some of it in a pinch? Yeah, you could. Uh, this is more of like a, a average person's everyday carry type cutting. But I did like the texture and the extra grip that that uh, pattern did uh, cause. And uh, they did a good job of knocking any sharp spots or points off. No hot spots besides the stuff I felt on the clip. But that was, you know, it, with pushing a lot of force into it. Very minimal hardware. You have the Civivi branded pivot that is countersunk and flush. And one body screw back here. T8 on the pivot and a very nice T8 on the back. One standoff. <clears throat> Another reason why this is, you know, a light duty uh, cutting task type of knife. You have a nice deep carry pot clip that follows the lines of the knife. I like how they have that curved clip on it. And it goes, you know, fairly deep. Let's check it out in the pocket. I found it went into the pocket nicely because you have a pretty nice size ramp. And even though you have that texture on the scales, it doesn't really cause much, you know, um, friction onto the jeans where I feel, feel like it's going to shred the pocket or anything. Sits very deep. All you can see is a little peak right there, so it pretty much disappears. It does do a good job of hugging the side of the jeans. Let's take a look at the inside. Very, very lightweight knife. You got tons of skeletonization on the uh, show side and one little cut out right there. Let's check it out on the scale. First off in grams, coming in at 87.9 grams or 3.1 ounces. So yeah, it's a featherweight. All right, let's take a look at the lockup. Mine is sitting, I don't know, let's say around, call that maybe 40%. Yeah, I'd call it maybe 40%. Uh, no play up or down, left or right, side to side. Nice tight lockup. Access to the lock bar is pretty good. Uh, it has a little bit more cut out over here. You have a little bit of texture right there for grip. And it does sit, stick up a little bit higher. It's not bad. Um, especially, I like to use that side of my thumb. And uh, it's easy to disengage. Quick size comparison, Ontario Wrap Model 1 and 2. Civivi Button Lock Elementum and the QSP Penguin. Lastly, we have the Vosti Nightshade and the Spyderco Tenacious. It's very uh, close to the Tenacious. Uh, it's a little bit larger than the Nightshade. All right, nitpicks and complaints. Uh, don't really have much. Maybe um, if you're going to do this grind, I would have much rather them put this as a, you know, a deep hollow grind or, you know, a thin hollow grind. So this is a super slicer. And then you could have this as your, you know, thicker, more rugged grind. But I, I don't really think it's you know, the best uh, best grind for such a smaller knife. Um, maybe have it tap for uh, left-hand carry. I know then they would have had to have two, different, two separate clips. I don't know, or maybe do a left-handed version. But other than that, uh, you know, as a average, you know, utility, I mean, as an average blade to use for your everyday EDC task, as long as you're not, you know, a very you know, hardcore user doing some crazy stuff with your knife. I think it's going to be an excellent, excellent choice. Uh, the price is right. The, the 14C is, you know, an excellent, excellent budget steal. And I think it's a very unique looking knife. Love to hear y'all thoughts down below of the new Spiny Dogfish. What a funny name there. And uh, do you plan on picking one up? They should uh, be going live, if not by the time this video is up, um, soon after. I will have links in the uh, description if you're interested in picking you, yourself up one of these. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Purr, purr, purr. Bah, 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 bah.